Roads? Marty, where we're going, we don't need roads or balance wheels, or dials. What's up? It's the Accutron Space View 2020 and the Accutron DNA. Let's go. What is up, watch fam? My name is Michael. Shout out real quick to Brian Perkins. He commented on our Accutron short film that we did a little bit ago with that comment. And Christian and I basically were like, that's a great Back to the Future reference. We should put that in this video. So again, shout out to Brian Perky. Did I say Perkins the first time? Okay, so basically the Accutron Space View 2020 and the Accutron DNA are really cool watches and I feel like I learned a lot about physics and myself after trying to figure out how these movements work. Hopefully I can give you a good explanation of them, but real quick, this is not quite a week on the wrist. We had these for a little bit more than a week, so figured we'd do a review on them. And the original aim we had in mind was taken, so you know we came up with what we could. Anyways, real quick, like I said, I am wearing both of these watches. I've never worn two watches at the same time. I probably won't do it again, but it is fun for this video. I do wanna say though, I have very small wrists. I'm not a very big person, so we had to bring in large wrist John. He owns Ann Grain, located in New Jersey, and he's been working the grain for a while because he's got some pretty big wrists. And the watches actually, they look incredible on his wrists, so you'll see his wrist, you'll see my wrist, just to kinda give you a different perspective. Now, real quick, in terms of proportions of these watches, I, I think they work really well, specifically because of the movement. Now, usually watches that are this size, which I'll go over specifics in a second, I feel like they struggle with having too much empty space on them, so it kind of looks odd. There's the logo, there's the seconds hand, and you know, there's this much blank space. But since the movement is kind of the star of the show here, it's really proportioned very well. And we'll go into that more in a second. But real quick, the Space View 2020, just for reference, is this kind of more classic style looking watch. The DNA is this kind of sleeker, modern looking watch. I really like the DNA. Anyways, now on to the specifics. The Space View 2020 is 43.5 millimeters in diameter. 15.4 millimeters thick. It uses 316L steel. Water resistance is 50 meters. So while you technically can swim with it, I would suggest you don't just to be on the safe side, but you can definitely splash it and it can rain on it, no problem. And the DNA is 45.1 millimeters. Case thickness is around the same 15.4. Both of the crystals are domed with sapphire crystal, which is really, really nice. So these are basically impossible to scratch unless you have like a sapphire blade or a diamond blade on your person which unless you're in like RuneScape, I highly doubt that you do. You're not gonna scratch the crystals of these watches, so you should be all good there. Now, really kind of breaking down the looks of these two watches a little bit more, in terms of aesthetic, you kind of can pick. Do you want that retro futuristic kind of vibe that the original Accutron has? Or do you want kind of bleeding edge of modern design? So you, you have that choice. Like I said, the Space View 2020 is a little bit more classic, a little bit more retro. The DNA is very sleek and very modern. I love the DNA. Wowee. So just starting off looking at the Space View 2020, it has more traditional lugs, a leather strap, the exposed steel, kind of like the main frame of the dial is lighter than the DNA's, which is more nickel colored. And the DNA has hooded lugs, so the rubber or silicone band on it has kind of a natural curve for your wrist. Another thing you'll notice, well, I guess two things, is that the Space View 2020 has a red seconds hand while the DNA has a white seconds hand. And they both implement green from the original housing of the electronics on the original Accutron in the 60s. The Space View 2020 does it again on the frame kind of raised while the DNA does it around the bezel where the indices are. So both really cool ways to pay homage to the OG watch. Now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of things. So bear with me. Like always, check the comments, check the description. If there's any information that I got wrong, it will be posted in either of those places. So check that. But here we go. Stay with me, put your seatbelts on. We're gonna break down these watches. So Accutron is actually an independent company owned by the Citizen Group and Miyota, a movement making company, is also owned by the Citizen Group. So the movement for this watch is made by Miyota, basically all under the Citizen Watch Group. So same thing, almost in-house. I don't know if that's in-house or not, but it's basically as close as you can be if it's not. This is the caliber NS30-Y8A running in at 28 joules. So it's got some pretty solid bling in there. And honestly, when we're talking about the movement of this watch, we're talking about the watch. This is what Accutron does. They change the norm, which obviously is always needed. You need someone to challenge something, no matter how well established it is, 
or we stall. To me, that's kind of Accutron's MO. They change the way we think about movements. So kind of diving into that fact, the movement is actually a weird type of visual complication. And I know a complication on a watch is basically anything outside of the standard, like hour, minute, seconds hand. So a date wheel, perpetual calendar, anything like that. So technically this doesn't really add a function outside of timekeeping, but that's why I say visual complication because that is the entire purpose of this watch is this really beautiful and unique movement. And really the only way I can kind of compare that to another watch is if you take an automatic watch and there's a rotor in the back, a weighted oscillating rotor that spins 360 degrees, take that, that rotor, the most crucial part of getting power to the watch, obviously besides hand winding, put that on the front of the dial. That is basically what Accutron is doing here with their new movement and obviously what they did with the original tuning fork movement too but let's get into it specifically. Okay, so there's three, or I guess four, main components of this watch. To start off at the bottom, where the six is, we have two electrostatic rotors. Now where the 10 is, we have an electrostatic motor, not a rotor, and to the right of that, we have an accumulator. So those are really the biggest important, well, I guess there's one that you can't see, but there's also a stepping motor here too. The way this works, the turbines at the bottom, the two rotors are connected to a pair of integrated electric conductors fixed to the movement that generate power through static electricity. So there's basically on these two turbines, there's like an automatic movement, there's a weight. So when you move your wrist, you'll see they spin really fast and they actually spin extremely fast with really not a lot of movement of your wrist. So fast you can kind of feel them buzzing when you move around your wrist, which I really, really like that. Now I'm thinking that the weight is behind them and there's some type of gear just because, like I said, these rotors spin so fast. So the movement of your wrist spinning is what generates the static electricity. Now that static electricity is stored in the accumulator, which then powers two motors. The electrostatic motor, which is the one you see at the 10 o'clock position, that powers the seconds hand. And you can see, obviously, the motor moves smoothly and so does the seconds hand. That's why it has a perfect sweep to it. Now the other motor, the stepping motor, is what you're familiar with when you see a quartz second hand, you see that ticking. What's making that tick is the stepping motor. Now, since this is generating power through electrostatic rotors, power conservation is really, really important here. And I'll break that down kind of two times. We see that most notably by the fact that there are in fact two motors, one being the electrostatic motor moving and the second one being the stepping motor. Stepping motor moves the minute and the hour hands and it does tick, but you know, it's so small, it's imperceptible. You'd never see it. The reason there's two motors is for the power saving features. So you have the electrostatic motor at the 10 o'clock position. If you don't move the watch at all for five minutes straight, the electrostatic motor will actually stop and the seconds hand will cease at the 12 o'clock position. This obviously stops the motor, stops the second hand and starts to save power. If you just move your wrist generally, the seconds hand will start right back up. That is basically power saving mode. But if we go a step above that, say, I don't know, you take your watch off and you have to do something for eight days. The watch is still gonna tell time. So in reality, this watch has a 10 day, 240 hour power reserve, which I think is almost matched by no other watch, obviously besides quartz, which takes a battery, but this is powered by movement with a 10 day power reserve. So that's pretty crazy. Now what gets more interesting is that say you don't move this watch for 10 days, the watch stops. You actually can't hand wind these watches to get them started. And I think also keeping this watch a watch winder, I don't think that will power the watch. I think it has to be on your wrist because the more aggressive movements keep the weights moving faster. So keep that in mind. But after 10 days, the watch stops. It's not telling time. To get it going, you basically put it on your wrist and you have to you know, go like this for three to five seconds. But a level kind of above that or below that is that um, these watches come from Accutron with a two year reserve in their capacitor. And what I mean by that is not that the watch is gonna run for two years straight until perfect time. That capacitor basically always has to have a charge in it. So Accutron says two years is the minimum. It could last five years or more, but that capacitor can't deplete or you have to send it back to Accutron. And you can tell that because the seconds hand will stop at the four o'clock position. So when you're thinking about charging this watch, you're not charging it necessarily for a day-to-day -day purpose you're kind of adding power to this two year bank or this five year bank or at 10 years. It really depends on how much you move. And the guideline they give is if you walk 6,000 steps a day, that'll charge the watch a day. So basically you're kind of balanced out there. If you didn't wear the watch, for example, for a year, it's kind of, you'd probably, the more steps you did, you'd be trying to charge it back up to that 100%. So that's a really interesting part of the watch. Kind of tough to explain because there's no gauge on the watch to say capacitor at this level. But again, there's a 
five-year warranty on the watch, which Accutron basically says, if anything happens in that time, if you don't move it, and send it back and they can fix it. It's not like the watch is broken, which obviously kind of makes sense. If you're going to buy this watch and not wear it for two years straight or not wear it for four years straight, why would you get the watch? It's kind of like you buy a car and then you park it in the driveway for three years and you don't drive it for three years and then you wonder why it needs to get serviced. All right, so I think that's it. I think that's what I wanted to cover. Hopefully I broke that down enough. Obviously we have quartz movements, we have automatic movements, we have watches that are updated through satellites. There's a lot of different ways to keep the time. You, you know, you can flip an hourglass every hour, but I think what's really important is that we have a brand like, and this is getting sappy. I love Accutron. And I really like the fact that they were just like, hey, here's a watch powered by electrostatic rotors. It just, it's really cool. I can't wait to see what they do next. And I think it's really cool in this second resurgence and popularity of wristwatches to have a brand that's just like, all right, throw a traditional movement out the window, whether it be solar quartz or satellite or automatic or hand wind or whatever, throw that movement out and let's just do it a different way and see what we get with it. Well, anyways, that is the Accutron Space View and the DNA. Be sure to check out the short film that we made and uh, I'll catch you later. Catch you on the flippity flip.